All right, it's time to go balls deep. And wow, what a powerful end to the arc. At least this arc ended on a great spark and this episode was great. I really enjoyed it and so many things happened that developed a lot of characters in positive ways. I really do hope the consistency and quality of Boruto keeps up like this. Also, forgive me today, I am really, really sick right now so I may sound different or not as energetic as usual. I am also going to do Boruto chapter 31 analysis today or tomorrow I'm just not feeling so good so I wasn't able to do it but please do come back to the channel as it will be uploaded soon so as usual here is my analysis and opinion for this week's Boruto episode and let's cue the intro Okay, last week I stated how Mitsuki did not cry for Sekie, his friend, and how Mitsuki is still developing from phase 2 to phase 3. He himself admitted it today on how he wavered on whether or not he was empty inside, and Ku explained what I've mentioned before, that Mitsuki went along with them, with people that are just like him, to see if there is a purpose to his existence and his will. Thinking about it now, Mitsuki not crying for Sekie is juxtaposed from the earlier Boruto episode that showcased Inojin crying so much for an actor that he looked after and nurtured himself, treating it like a living creature such as a pet or another human being. So what the writers were trying to do I think, was trying to show us how Mitsuki is not as human as he wants to be or thinks he is. There is still a level of difference between him and someone like Boruto for example. Mitsuki couldn't even cry for his friend and fabrication Sekie, where Inojin did so for a pet. It is showcasing the contrast between Mitsuki and the others and how he feels about himself. This is why in today's episode, Sarada and Boruto had to reaffirm their belief in him, and Boruto states that the Mitsuki standing in front of them right now is the real him, what, who they love and they care for. Mitsuki realizes his will to protect Boruto makes him more stronger and more human than he thought. They even mentioned the other Mitsuki in Orochimaru's lab which was an excellent touch I must say and I love that, and this emphasizes the point. Mitsuki needs to see his value and inclination of who he is. The other versions of himself is clearly on his mind and this is why Boruto and Sarada are so important for his development, so that he can see that he is his own person. A Mitsuki that has shared a bond with two people that another person, another Mitsuki wouldn't have with them. And again, this is why Boruto is Mitsuki's son, because he is learning morals and humanity through Boruto that is guiding him to become the person he wants to be. Sarada and Boruto giving back the headband and saying that he wants to get to know the real Mitsuki just reaffirms his decision and will to know that he is making the right choice, goddammit. It's basic shounen stuff, right? Sometimes the simple thing shouldn't be changed because it's very impactful and always works. Don't fix something that isn't broken and works a lot of the time. Sometimes it can be boring because it's something we've already seen before, but I think Boruto done it right this time round and I liked it. Now, in my earlier videos, I did say I was hoping for Mitsuki Sage Mode vs Boruto, so at least I got half of what I wanted. Mitsuki going Sage Mode was amazing, just seeing him in that form is sick, and I know for a fact that people are already gonna complain about power scaling issues and say how come Mitsuki is nerfed and lo he lost against Lord Ku, that is bullshit, right? Also, mind you, the speculation that Mitsuki didn't have Sage Mode anymore because of Urushiki Otsuki is kind of been debunked now since you know he used it of course, Mitsuki's sage mode in today's episode was not the full transformation, we all need to notice that, he did not have the horn or the perfect form. The first time he went sage mode against Orochimaru and he blitzed him and Orochimaru couldn't even keep up, that was the peak of power that Mitsuki displayed. The version of his sage mode did not have the floating snakes or the horn or the snakeification bits on his face, so this wasn't him at full power. However, seeing as though Mitsuki is one of my favourite characters, Seeing him in sage mode again it was amazing and him destroying Lord Ku here and there just tells us the amazing potential that he has. After this scene we cut to Naruto as the Hokage dealing with the politics. Shikamaru after one day finally gets approval for him and Naruto decides to leave. 
The interaction between Sai and all of them was fantastic, Naruto is a really supportive Kage for the current generation and I just think he's a great leader, he knows what he is doing, he respects people's decisions and allows them to learn independently, something that was a little different from the previous generation when Naruto always had to end up disobeying orders or a lot of people were close minded and they didn't want change. Naruto seems to know that change is inevitable with technology and culture and time so he's trying to guide the next generation to understand the concept of the will of fire and build one will of their own. The fact that Naruto left his response open ended to them to see if they want to come or not it says everything on how great of a leader he is and why he's a great role model. The whole class came to see them and support the class and it shows that they are all in this together which Naruto notices and compliments them on. The next episode should explore the re repercussions of Mitsuki's actions and Oniki's actions however uh, you know how they feel about everything and what Mitsuki has done is wrong. And oh, I'm so sick right now but let me carry on. So the next scene confused me, Lord Ku does his particle style and somehow they all survive and fall on water. The directing here needed to be a bit better because I wasn't the only one left confused while watching this. I mean I think they implied that Sarada smashed the ground with a punch since she noticed the hollow sound and she used her intelligence. She's basically the MVP of the whole arc and it seemed that way. The three end up fighting Lord Ku and it's great, I loved how they showed each of them being taken down one by one the way it was directed and showcased, so they end up combining their strength, displaying the three working together is what it's all about and it's always fun to see that. Now during this fight it caused a lot of confusion from all of us, some of us saw Sarada unlock a second Tomoe in a Sharingan and some of us are saying she didn't. I for one when I saw this scene logically thinking Sarada unlocked a second one in her left eye since it was insinuated in the situation that they are in. They are about to die so it makes sense for her to feel this urge to grow stronger, that's the first thing I thought that happened. Sasuke did the same thing, Sasuke also unlocked a second Tomoe in his left eye against Haku but his right eye only had one. He later developed his Sharingan even more to unlock more power later on. So this is what I was thinking that they were, they were doing this with Sarada as well and that makes more sense to me. So I'm guessing logically speaking with the way it was directed this is what made Sarada have more precognition, more knowledge, more power up and she was able to dodge everything and be more confident and it all made sense to me. However later on in the scenes the art showcased Sarada having one in each eye again so maybe it's an art mistake that they forgot to put the second one in or all of us are seeing things <laughs> and nothing really happened. Her Sharingan made that noise however where it looks like she unlocked the second one and you could clearly see it forming in her eye so I definitely think it was to enhance her powers but I don't know, I don't know what happened. Lastly, Oniki sacrifices himself and says his goodbyes by doing his final jutsu and the way they showcased it, it was great, the animation was good but let's talk about Konohamaru. Fodoramu technically could have saved Oniki's life. He was told not to reveal his identity because of the law, but the law was already being broken by Team 7 and Shikadai for example, so I don't understand why he didn't do anything this entire arc. Naruto literally asked him, oh you saved everyone and Konohamaru says no why do you do anything <laughs> like what if Konohamaru saved Oniki nothing would happen anyways it would it wouldn't be a bad plot device it would actually make him look awesome with development and showcase his power so is Oniki dead in the Shikamaru novel which takes place after this arc chronologically and it does happen it shows that Oniki is alive in the novel and book and we know novels get adapted and become canon because the next arc is based on the novel for example and the Shinochiya arc for example. Also I'm pretty sure Naruto was there so he can use his godlike Seijo 6 path powers to, anyway to put life back into Oniki and keep him sustained uh, if he didn't arrive too late because Naruto did the same thing for Mike Guy, Obito and Kakashi. So if that was indeed Oniki's death it was brushed aside pretty quickly and should have been much more epic with the whole village crying for him since he was such a legendary figure for them much like what Konoha did for the third Hokage so I'm hopefully thinking in the next episode a lot of things will be cleared up and on whether or not Oniki is dead and if there is a funeral it's going to be showcased to be huge like the thirds hopefully. I personally feel as though he isn't dead but if he is that is pretty sad and I was surprised how emotional it made me although I was correct about everything in this arc in terms of explaining why his ideology is incorrect and he's stupid and how Oniki is flawed. 
In today's episode, he finally recognized his own flaws and he finally self-reflected to see that his, he twisted his will into hatred and stupidity. So I respect when somebody can finally do that. I still felt some sympathy for him and sorrow. Maybe Naruto is rubbing off on all of us and we are more forgiving than we think. Overall, I think this episode was great and I want to see more of it and I'm really interested in what's going to happen in the next arc. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. <laughs> I'm so sick right now. I hopefully I get my review for the Boruto Chapter 31 out tomorrow. Follow us on Instagram or Twitter and I'll see you guys next time.